Hi, this is Rob Webster from One Division Tutorials, and welcome to the first lesson on how to produce a Retro House Acid Techno record using only Ableton Live and free VST plugin synths. In the introduction video, you should have heard the track that we will be creating, so you know exactly what sort of style we're going to be going for. First of all, please make sure that you have downloaded all the parts containing the beats and the sounds that we are going to use for this project. Once you have done that, make sure to select them within your search browser in Ableton on the left hand panel, and they should be over here. What we want to do in this is to create a track in the style of early house music from the late 80s such as Kevin Saunderson, Derek May, Adonis, Trax Records, that sort of thing, but bring it up to scratch with today's technology. We will be using for this first lesson just the 909 and the 808 drum samples which I've provided for you, and we'll be constructing the beat at 125 beats per minute. This course will be quite in depth but I won't confuse you with anything that is too intense. I will explain things in a clear and straightforward manner. The first lesson that we're going to be doing today is strictly focusing on the beats, but we will be adding some effects on a send return channel, which I'll explain a little bit more later. OK, so we're going to get started now. We're going to introduce the kick in a moment. But first of all, what I want to do, I want to make sure that we've got the returns set up over here on these three channels here. Now the reason we do this is to save on CPU and also it helps in the mix down later on. It's very similar to bussing, but I just like to use these as opposed to setting up a bus channel. There's not a great deal of difference really. So we need a delay, a reverb and a compressor. So A and B should already be installed within your arrangement. So you need to add another one. So just go to create and insert return track and that will come up over here. For the first one, for A, I'd like to get into audio effects and select ping pong delay and put that down here and select it to 30% and 30%. And then for B, reverb concert hall. So we go into your audio effects again audio effect rack reverb concert hall put that into there and use those settings and then for the C we take a compressor and we put it in and we raise the output slightly and we lower the threshold slightly this is all a personal tasting I mean you can you can have your compressor set whatever you feel is right so we've got those set up now what we want to do is insert the kick so we find our 909 kick drum in the samples pack that I've provided for you and we copy that over eight times and we loop it then we go into session view again as you can see the send switch is set to C which is the compressor now I put a compressor on the kick if I turn that down you can hear it going up So that's basically how the send and return work. And it's good to have this for, you know, as I say, for tracks that are going to have multiple compressors on, as opposed to having a reverb for, say, your close hat, your hi hat, your snare, your clap, instead of having individual reverbs on each channel, which will just kill your CPU and make the mix sound really muddy and, and not clear at all. Just have the one over here and then just send it to every time with these faders, with the appropriate fader, which is B in this instance. Okay. Next we want to insert the closed hat and that is over here and it's called CL808 and what we do is we put that on the line at the same as the kick and then we'll drag another one over slack so, so it's and we need to put them under every single kick and they should sound like that okay put some EQ on again select high quality take the bottom end out slightly raise the top end a bit give it a little bit of a pierce next up we want to insert the open hats so that's down here HH808 open but what we do with this is we put it on after every kick like so but with this at the moment it sounds like this it's, it's fully open so, it's, so you get the full length of it but what we're going to do for this track is half the bar and put it in between every kick so it gives it a shorter sharp feel to it, so like so. Again what I've done with that is put some reverb on it, so I've sent that from B in my sends over to here. So next we're going to introduce the A to 8 snare. And what we do is with the snare, we miss one, add one, miss one, add one. But what we do is for this very last box, we put one there and we put one on the very last bar. 
And again with the sends, we put a slight bit of reverb on. Probably about halfway. And some compression. Okay, next we're going to introduce the claps. We'll put the claps in exactly the same as the snare. So it sounds like this. And we've added some EQ here as well. I've raised it slightly just to put out the brightness of it. Otherwise it would sound like that. And also just going back, we've done some EQ on the snare as well. So as you can see, we've just lifted it slightly there. Next we're going to introduce a crash. And that's the 909 crash. So we drag that in, open that up, double click on it. But if you can hear the crash now, it's quite low and it's quite dull. What we want to do is transpose it up six semitones. Just drop that slightly. And now it will sound a lot more clearer and a lot more crisper. See? Same with that. Add some uh, EQ. Take the bottom end out on one and two. Leave three where it is and just raise number four. So it gives it that sharper feel. And again with that, set the reverb to about three o'clock. Okay, now what we want to do is introduce 909 ride. But what we're going to do with the ride is we're going to half it like so and then drag it in again and then half it again like that and then take those two and make six small ones and one half size and copy those over like that and I put some um, reverb on there at about one o'clock okay so the track's starting to take shape now as you can see Next we're going to introduce some toms. Now what we're going to do for the toms is we're going to not going to use audio as opposed to what we've already done. We're going to use a MIDI drum rack. So we go over here into instruments and just click on drum rack and just drag it down there and it opens up the drum machine down the bottom. And then what we do is we go back into our samples and we take high tom and put that over here onto D2. Mid tom, put that over here onto C sharp 2 and low tom and put that over here on C2 and then that will put us over onto the keyboard there's the toms and we're just going to record a simple pattern I'll just stick on the metronome over here just to give me a guidance and there you have it delete those few and here is our pattern. Select all of the sounds. Over to edit, click quantize and drag them all into time. Take off your metronome. And then pull down. Again, I've stuck on some compression and some reverb in the sense. go there's your toms so uh, use the drum rack oh, you I mean you can actually put them in program them in with audio but it's a lot easier just to put, use the keyboard okay next up we're going to introduce a 909 click and that's just this little sound here sounds like a woodblock thing and what we do is we need to draw in a pattern like so if you just follow this, I mean, you can do this any in any any way you like. It's easy if you just do it like this. For now, what we want to do is just get the thing rolling. Wow. 
one on there. Okay, so the beats is really starting to come together now. Now what we're going to do is introduce the 808 bell, the classic 808 bell that is, and we're going to put that over here onto a second part of the beat. So we're going to copy over what we've already done and just put those there like so. Drop the toms over, leave the ride cymbal out, put the crash over, stick the click over, and then put the bells on the same as the snare again and this is just to give the when the track starts to gain momentum we're going to have a different sort of beat now what we're going to do is we're going to have a completely different this is where the clap builds up so if you can see the claps here what I've done if you like to copy that pattern for the claps this is where it starts to build up I'm going to use this section a little bit later on in the track so it sounds like this You can hear that the uh, when the track starts to get a bit heavier. Okay, next we want to introduce a 909 snare on the new part of the drums that we've put in. Again, the same as the bell and the original snare. This just gives the track a bit more punch, you know, as it builds. Here you go. Put some um, high quality EQ on there. Just solo that. Brightened it up a little bit. The click as well also has some top end on it, a bottom end taken out. And the cowbell, same again, quite high on the top end, not so much on the bottom. So here's the beat so far. Okay, so we've come to the end of lesson one and we should hopefully have something sounding very similar to what I've done here. I'm going to delete these now as my original guidance and keep the beats that we've just programmed in. It's also a good idea if you don't already do this is to name all of your tracks individually so you know exactly what sound is on which channel. It's always good practice. Okay, the next lesson we're going to focus on the acid bass line, the Chicago stack sound, the chord pad and a high string sound. Um, what I want to do is to try and get all of the elements of the Acid House Chicago Detroit styles combined into one. So a final recap then, you've got your kick, your closed hats, your open hats, your 8 to 8 snare, your 909 clap, your crash, your ride, your toms, your 8 to 8 bell, your click and your 909 snare. So, okay so head over to lesson 2 now where we'll focus on the next part and thank you for joining in.